what is going on guys it is that day of the week it is whip it wednesday i am super super excited as i am every week however this week i'm really excited because i have a very special guest my friend gabriel from jtl ministries he's going to be joining us today and he's going to be sharing thankfulness under what he believes through the word of god is thankfulness what it means and how we can apply it into our lives. So guys, I just wanna thank you for watching every week. Make sure that you like, commenting, and subscribing, and just enjoy the video. I really pray that this video blesses you today. All right, guys, I love you, God bless, and remember to be motivated, be encouraged, and be inspired to share your story and to walk in the glory of God. Love you guys. God bless you all. Uh, thank you for joining me here at um, Moving Mountains. My name is Gabriel Barrero, and um, I am uh, Osbert's friend from uh, JTL Ministries. And I'm just so thankful that he allowed me to come here today and uh, give a devotional, share a devotional with you guys. So today, uh, the topic that was given to me was Thanksgiving, right? Being thankful. Right. So today I want to uh, open up God's word and share with you God's word and encourage you and admonish you and give you reasons why you ought to be thankful, why we ought to be thankful. Right. So today's passage is going to be found in Psalms 106. Uh, in verse 1 it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can declare all his praises? Praises. I want to stop right there. When we speak of Thanksgiving, right, uh, it involves the receiving of something. It involves uh, the giving and the receiving. One person gives and the other receives such a good gift. Uh, or it doesn't have to be material. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's not. Um, and in this case, um, it's 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 immaterial. We see that 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 we're giving thanks to the Lord because of His goodness. Right, because of his very own character, because of his very own nature. It says his mercy endures forever and ever. Like it's an everlasting mercy. What is mercy? Uh I think of an illustration a pastor once gave. Like when I don't know if you guys ever played this as kids, but the game is called Mercies and the two people are trying to uh, struggle against one and another and one ultimately gets the upper hand and inflicts pain on the person and the person on their knee says, mercy, mercy, mercy. And then the per person on top relents, lets go of that of that infliction of, of, of pain, right? Given to that other person, they say mercy and in his kindness, in his goodness to him he relents and he lets go and the person is uh relieved of of the suffering that could have came upon him or that is upon him right so that is the mercy of god that endures forever and then and it is it's it's magnifying this and it's saying who can can possibly utter these mighty acts of god who who can declare all his praises? It would be impossible. Um, I think there's actually a passage in the in the scriptures that say that um, all of the pages uh, of this book will fall short to declare all that Christ has done. Right in his in his short thirty years uh, here on earth, all the miracles that he had done. Imagine. Imagine um, the, the fullness of eternity and all he's done in all eternity. It's just incomprehensible to declare all of his praises. Let's continue to read. Blessed are those who keep justice and he who does righteousness at all times. And then the psalmist says in verse 4, Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have towards your people. O visit me with your salvation, that I may see the benefit of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory with your inheritance. And then in verse 6 to 7, this um, truly highlights the, the, the mercy of God, right? So we see in verse 6, it says, We have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. Um, so here, the psalmist is accepting blame towards uh, his actions uh, against God. Um, iniquity, right? Iniquity, this is wrongdoing, sins. These are um, things that he's acted wrongly. Um, we have done wickedly, it says next. Our fathers in Egypt did not understand your wonders. They did not remember the multitudes of your mercies, but they rebelled by the sea, the Red Sea. And verse 8 
right here. This is the, the glory, the reason why we should give uh, uh, so much thanks to our God who is who is so good and whose mercy endures forever. In verse 8, it says, Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake that he might make his mighty power known. What a, what a beautiful thing to know that we have a, a eternal, everlasting God that is merciful. His mercy endures forever and ever. And and then as this psalm continues, um, I encourage you to read it yourself. I'll just read um, a couple of verses. Verse 20, the, um, uh, um, verse 13, they soon forgot his works. Of, of his mercy and all that he did the, the way that they did, he delivered them by the Red Sea verse 16 um, when they in, envied Moses in the camp verse 20 thus they changed their glory uh, into the image of an ox that eats grass there's 24 verse 24 then they despised the pleasant land they did not believe his word verse 28 they joined themselves also to Baal of Peor and ate sacrifices made to the dead verse 32 they angered him which is God they angered God also at the waters uh, at the waters of strife so that they went ill with Moses on account of them verse 36 they serve idols which became a snare to them they sacrifice even their sons in verse 37 uh, in verse 40 therefore the wrath of the Lord was kindled against them uh, against his people so they so that he abhorred his own inheritance and he gave them into the hand of the Gentiles and verse 43 um, many times he delivered them but they rebelled in their counsel and and were brought low for their iniquity so if god's mercy did not last forever if it wasn't everlasting then he would have done away with these people with his chosen ones because they continued and continued and continued to to rebel and act wickedly against him but because he is good because he is a god of mercy uh, uh, that endures forever and ever verse 44 says nevertheless he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry and for their sake he remembered his covenant and relented according to the multitude of his mercies he also made them to be pitied by all those who carry them away captive two words in verse 47 save us and then, then um these next three words to give thanks let me fill in the blank. It says, save us, O Lord, our God, and gather us among the Gentiles to give thanks. So we are saved for this very purpose, for this very reason, so that we can give thanks to his holy name. And now uh, moving to the New Testament, right? Uh, this is written in the Old Testament, moving into the New Testament. The New Testament actually tells us 71 times to give thanks to God, to be thankful. And Paul surely does encourage this uh, a lot. And he tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So God desires us to be thankful at all times as we stand in Christ Jesus. Because in Christ Jesus, we've received all things. We've received that eternal mercy. Uh, the, 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 the manifold of his mercy was exemplified on the cross of Christ, you know, uh, on, on the cross of Calvary, I'm sorry, where Christ beheld our own, our own sin in his very own body so that we could be forgiven, so that God can be just and the justifier of the wicked. See, he doesn't just let your sins go under the table. No, he bears them on himself and then he suffers the full wrath of God so that you can be forgiven and that those sins can be rightly paid for. He, he tells us not only give thanks in all circumstances for no reason. No, if you go back into the very own text, you can see why um, we are to be thankful no matter what our circumstances are here on earth. In verse 5, it says, You are all children of light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. See, God has delivered us from a life of a, li a lifelong uh, pursuit of, of, of sin and, and being kept in darkness. And he's delivered us out of that into the glorious light of his son, Jesus Christ. And in verse 9, it says, For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that, in verse 10, uh, whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. So although, yes, we rebel like the, the Israelites did, although, yes, we have sinned and act wickedly against him, yet he sent his only begotten son so that whoever believeth him shall not perish. So we have hope. We have uh, an assurance that says that we will be there again with him because he died and resurrected. So we will be with him uh, for all eternity. And, and in all eternity, we will not exhaust giving praise and hallelujahs to his name, to his holy name. So I hope that was an encouragement for you. And I hope that today, if you uh, have forgotten any reason to be thankful for, you can look back to the moment where God had revealed to you your sin and yet revealed to you at the same time his son, Jesus Christ, who died for those very own sins so that you can have salvation, so that you can be reconciled to him and and, and be his friend and not his enemy. For that is the greatest reason to, to be thankful. And, and if that is the only reason, that is all you need. So God bless you and have a good day. Thank you.